<laughs> Hello. All right. We're live. Hooray. Hold on. I just got to get my phone set up. Um, so this is a little informal and a little like, ah, um, messed up. And I didn't announce this or anything because I want to do this kind of as a test. Um, I don't expect many people to be on the stream, but that's okay. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Nora. I'm a leather worker and a videographer, and I've been making these relaxing uh, leather working and other artisan videos for YouTube for a little while now. Um, what I want to do today is just do kind of a more casual video of me just working on some leather projects. Um, I have something that's like a uh, a new project for a like a completely new thing that I've never made before and so I wanted to kind of show you guys how I start those kinds of projects and how I go about making a pattern and um, and yeah just kind of talking about general troubleshooting I would really love for the live streams to be uh, going a little bit more into detail and, and having me explain some of the things that I'm doing and why I'm doing them and um, get some some Q&A from you guys. So yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's, I guess let's start by kind of looking a little bit at my workspace. Um, right now I can't I don't know if I can get my camera to be like far enough away that we can really see everything, everything. But this is my my worktop that you will have seen if you've watched any of my videos. I want to do um, like a prettier video where I actually go through and talk about what I have in my workshop. But I'll just give you a quick little tour right now um, just to kind of kick things off. Uh, so over here, of course, we have my infamous tool rack. Um, I This was actually made by uh, my husband, not me, so I don't really get to take the credit for having this really beautiful thing because he also did leatherworking for a long time. Um, and <laughs> I kind of, uh, since, since I'm so much more into it, um, I kind of took over all of his stuff. <laughs> But he still gets to use it on occasion. So, so yeah, what do I have here? And I also have these jugs of um, uh, rivets that I haven't really gotten a chance to put away. So I'll just like throw those away right now. Uh, okay. So, um, I guess I'll start with the thing that I use the least, but is the largest thing in my workshop that you know, you see all the time, it's this gigantic machine. <laughs> um, this is actually uh, supposed to be for sewing on patches. I think it's like the Chinese leather patch machine. Um, and I got it on Amazon for a hundred dollars or something. And um, I have used it with mild success a couple of times, but it's, it's very temperamental. It's really not user friendly. <laughs> So I don't really end up using it that much, but that's okay. Um, it's, it, you know, it sits there. It's attached onto the back of this thing, which isn't even really attached to the desk. So, all right, tools that I have. Um, let's see, over here, I, the, the tools that I use the most, I would say, are like these ones right here. So I've got my, what's called a scratch all. Um, and this is just, a basic all for punching holes for like for marking your leather um, if you're using oily leather that works really well um, and yeah I just I use this a lot for punching holes um, then I have my fancy knife that a lot of people uh, really like so it's um, I think it's called a utility knife or something um, and oh right so you unscrew here and then the blade you can have different blades for this but I have this curved one and then you put it in like that and whoops and you screw it into place um I usually keep that closed uh 
I have my all for punching curved holes. I have this little tool for, um, this is for carving out like a, uh, for carving a groove for sewing. Um, I have this really large, I think it's called a French, um, a French groover. Uh, but I use this for when I'm making shoes. Um, I've got a smaller version of that, which is just for beveling edges. I've got a um, this tool that's that's good for sh marking holes. Um, I have something that's similar to that that has like a pattern on it, so I can do cool patterns on the edges and stuff. And I've got my threads up here. This one I don't really use. This is sort of leftover from, it's like fake sinew, leftover from my Viking reenactment days. I've got this awl. This is a thread for a sewing awl. Um, I use this when I'm, when I used to make shoes. Uh, I liked it because it's a little thinner um, and goes through the holes for that a little bit better. And I have just a basic waxed nylon thread um, much less expensive, great for sewing pouches and other big utility items. Um, I have a pair of scissors, always good. I have a pair of pliers, good for pulling things apart or taking off rivets that you don't like. I have my little sewing kit, which has a little pair of scissors in it and my needle case that has all the different kinds of needles that I use. Um, this was actually hand carved by a friend uh, from Viking Reenactment. Um, and I have my mallet. Um, my mallet, I have, hi, uh, Garou. <laughs> um, the mallet, uh, I actually put this leather cap on this end because if you're working, if you wanna hammer on leather itself, if you're doing shoes or something that's shaped, something where you need, um, like if there's a sharp edge on something that you want to be more curved over, um, a mallet is a really great tool for leather working, um, but the rawhide part of the mallet will really like mark your leather a lot and will kind of like scratch it and stuff. So I have this leather cap that I put on this side so that I wouldn't damage my leather when I'm hammering it. So, whoa. <clears throat> um, this side is really good. This is the one that I use for doing all of my tooling and for punching holes and Stuff like that. So uh, down here I have like pencils and other crap, some rubber bands, a uh, milk jug for tea. <laughs> um, and uh, I also have this block that has all of my um, all of my hole punching stuff and the basic tooling things that I use on a regular basis. Uh, I have a candle up here. This is, I usually use this for taking photos because it's really pretty looking, but sometimes I need a candle so that I can like uh, help wax that's accumulated on the leather to soak back in or um, for tying off knots and stuff. All right, so that's the basic tour of my tools that I use for everyday stuff. I have, I have some other stuff that I use sometimes too, like this belt and punch that I use to make stuff look... Uh, that I use for belt ends, um, a tool that is similar to the groove, the groove tool, but this one is just for marking like a distance. So I use this when I'm making belts or straps and stuff like that. Um, I have a edge. This is an like an edge bevel that's really, really tiny for really like tiny straps. And I have this, um, this is like a skive, a skiving tool. Um, and I use this to, to thin out leather that is too thick. So a lot of times when you're bending something over for the end of a strap uh, to put a buckle on, then you wanna skive some of your leather off. Um, all right, so I think that that's good for now. Um, I'm gonna start getting into this project and uh, you guys can kind of find out a little bit more about my process. Um, all right, so first things first. Um, uh, let's see, is my pattern? This is the 
yarn folder. Um, so I, I don't currently have a very good system for keeping my patterns. I just kind of keep them all in a gigantic folder. Um, but I use clothes, I, I use um, safety, no, not safety bins. What are these? Um, trombone paper clips uh, to keep my patterns together. So this pattern that I'm going to work on today is kind of similar to the gorget that I did the other week. Um, the idea is to make something that's like, um, like kind of like the shoulder piece of the top of a cape. So it's going to have like a collar piece that's separate, just like with the gorget pattern. Um, except for instead of being two separate pieces, one for the front and one for the back, since it's going to be open in the front for a cape, um, the back piece is going to come all the way down to the front like this. So I thought that I would start with the gorget pattern. Let's see if I can find it in here, maybe. Um, are you? No. Um, if anyone has any questions, I am going to try to... Oh, can I look at my live stream on here? Um, I want to be able to answer any questions that you guys have if there's been something that while watching the videos um, from other weeks and you're like oh my gosh I really wanted to know how it was that you did that or what was that tool that you used feel free to ask at any point during the stream I will try to keep an eye on um, on the chat so if you ask questions I will be able to answer them um, Uh, as you can see, being more organized would probably be helpful for moments like this. But since it's just me working at home, I don't usually need to be more organized. I don't think that it's in here. I think it's in another folder. need it. <laughs> we'll start really from scratch. Okay, so I have this paper that's like a little bit thicker paper. It's this old, these old maps um, that, because uh, my husband used to be a, a sailor, and so he got these old maps for free. That's nice because it's like, it's just a little bit thicker than regular paper, and we have like huge amounts of it, so that's what I use for doing my patterns, but you can just use regular printer paper. That's what I used for years or um, like basically any thicker paper you can get your hands on, uh, like maybe like craft wrapping paper or something like that. Oh, uh, Gahu is asking, how do you make the patterns from armor from zero? You use duct tape and pattern and translate to paper. So uh, if I was doing something that was like really weird <laughs> in the form so uh, for my shoe pattern for instance I did the duct tape method where I you you put on something that will stop the duct tape from literally sticking to you sometimes people put saran wrap um, or you can use like a, a stocking um, and then you wrap the thing up in duct tape and you draw I, I at least draw lines on with a sharpie um, and then you try to delicately cut yourself out of the duct tape um, and lay those pieces kind of flat. Um, when I did that before, uh, for parts that were, that were like curved and rounded, I would cut, um, to lay it flat. Um, but for this pattern, since it's, um, since it's, it's kind of going to be one flat piece, I'm going to try to do it with just paper instead of trying to get into like wrapping myself up in saran wrap and duct taping myself and all of that. I don't think that it's gonna be too complicated. So, but we're gonna see, maybe, maybe it will be too complicated. <laughs> Cause I've never done this before, woohoo. Um, all right, so I'm gonna start. Oh, uh, Tyler is asking, saying, hello, we have the same leather patching machine. 
I just recently got into both paper and tape pattern making. Nice. Um, yeah, this machine, I, like, I really want it to work and it just is too annoying. <laughs> um, I think that probably if I oiled it more that it would work a lot better and I hope that someday I will be able to use it. But for now, I mean, it's just, I try to stick to patterns that I don't have to sew too much, basically, is the answer. <laughs> um, all right, so getting into this guy. Um, so I would, a lot of times what I do when I'm pattern making, let's see if we can have a little bit more of a look at is that I'll use some piece of clothing that I have that sort of matches the part of the body where I'm trying to make the pattern. So for instance, for this, um, and I think for the gorget, I used a t-shirt and kind of took the pattern from the t-shirt. So let's, let's see if we can do that. Uh, Tyler was saying something about the machine and now it's disappeared. Where's my chat? Oh. I don't know. Who knows? Um, Here, use that. Use my phone. Thank you. Oh, okay. I was going to try to pull it up on my computer. But I don't know how it works. Sorry, guys. Uh, like I said, first live stream. Not really sure how this is supposed to work. Oh. All right. No, no, no. It's okay, honey. I got it working on my computer. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I was just reading Tyler's comments about um, pulling the machine apart and greasing everything. And that's definitely something that I know I need to do. And I haven't gotten around to it yet. <laughs> um, okay, so here's a, a t-shirt that I have. This is from a Viking group that a friend of mine is in. Um, and let's start by, since this piece of paper is not big enough, more like it. have our t-shirt here um so something about the shoulders that I definitely notice a lot is the having these angles here really helps a lot the thing is that since we want to have this be coming over the top of the shoulders I'm not sure basically we're going to extend these lines straight out like this um to have them when they, it folds over the front of the shoulder uh, that it'll, it'll give that bend, which is kind of what I noticed with the, um, the gorget. So let's for now just kind of trace this out. Uh, basically with my pattern making, there's a lot of trial and error um, with the paper before I really go for, um, for the leather. That's kind of the secret. Um, so I'm gonna say, we're gonna extend this out. A little bit. Um, usually also, I'm kind of, I'm not actually gonna cut these out. Um, 
as I've drawn them here. What I'm gonna do is fold this in half and then cut out half of it so that I make sure that it's definitely um, symmetrical. But there I have that basic part there. And for the back, I guess we can have it come down to kind of a point like the, the back of the gorget did. So that was kind of fun. Um, I'm probably wasting a lot of paper here while I'm doing this, but since we got all these maps for free, I don't really mind too much. Um, all right, so like I said, I'm gonna cut out, instead of cutting out um, this entire shape, I'm really just gonna cut out half of it. I'm gonna like, fold it in half and then cut out the half. If for some reason, um, like the other side I can sort of try to match it up and if they like really don't match up for some reason then that'll kind of tell me that um, my design needs to be modified one thing that I will say about paper is that as you're making your pattern, you definitely can have this problem where like if, you're, if your paper is like really at an angle or something when you cut it, then when you lay it flat again, you'll notice that one side of the paper is, uh, is like a lot bigger or something than the other. You always have to really double check a lot to make sure that, um, to make sure that your pattern is actually symmetric on both sides. So I'm gonna start by, just kind of cutting out this general shape and then I'm basically gonna add on to it with other add on to it with other pieces of paper until I get something that resembles what I'm trying to make. So as we can see, um, just this shape. Let's have a look at what that'll give us. All right, so can see here that these these shapes they they'll come down and even though when they're flat it's like kind of a straight line here when it goes on me um, it's really at an angle um, so we can sort of use that to our advantage uh, someone has joined the, the stream as well. I'm afraid I cannot read your YouTube name. It is, I think, in Cyrillic, but hello! Um, all right, <laughs> where was I? Okay, so we have this basic shape for the back now. Um, and for the front now, I guess I'm gonna try to sort of imagine like where I wanna add in more to form this like cool front shape. Um, hi, Steve. Uh, for those of you joining the stream now, um, if you have any questions that you wanna ask me about previous videos, uh, feel free to ask in the chat and I will try to answer as best as I can. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so we have our beginning pattern. Uh, let's try now to add a little bit on the front. Um, I'm gonna use, this is actually very handy to have the live stream because I can use it as like a, as a mirror. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess that I kind of want it to come a little bit in like this to sort of form the full collar here. Um, and then maybe come down a bit and then come over and like kind of cut cut off this corner here. So. I'm gonna mark that on here and then I kind of want this to come in. And now we're gonna get a scrap piece of paper. Um, and so I do this a lot where, oh gosh, it's really hard to see with the, the, the marks and stuff on the paper. I guess you can kind of see. So I'm, I'm just putting this on top of here. Um, I'll probably tape this 
in place. Let me actually do that now. Tape. Hooray! Uh, here we go. All right, so now I can kind of draw out the parts that I want to add, and I'm basically going to keep doing this where I tape on a little bit of paper, I draw on it, cut it out, see how it looks, and so on. So I said that see but this part here I want it to kind of come out like this go down this part over here like that all right let's see how that looks so this part is obviously pretty simple pretty straightforward um, I'm gonna talk and like it's kind of the same for clothing as it would be for leather. Um, in a bit, when we go to working on the collar, uh, we're going to have to start accounting for the thickness of the leather, and that'll kind of change. Um, there's just a little bit of math <laughs> involved, basically. All right, so how does this look now? Okay, so it looks like my collar is, like, a little low, but if we're... I guess it kind of depends on how wide these shoulders these shoulders are so if I have it kind of out here then it's sort of a good a good size but if it's in a little bit more then it's kind of low down so maybe I will add a little bit of paper in here but I like um, this is kind of a good shape I like how that's looking um, and yeah, we're going to be ready to add to start working on the collar part soon. Okay. Okay. So back down to here. Um, all right, can be using these little scraps of paper. So I said that. Um, when you're doing this thing of adding the bits of paper, uh, I try not to have too much on the other side or I would tape this, this part down so that it kind of lays a bit better. Um, but since I'm going fast, <laughs> So I wanted this to come up a little higher. That maybe should go a bit more like that. All right, let's try like that. tape these down okay Let's try again. Ooh. all right so as we can see the collar is a bit better now um, I think that hmm. so we're gonna want to um, tape on a new piece so that I can get both sides looking the same or I could trace this um, I could trace this half of the design that's sort of more completed back onto another piece of paper that's folded in half and then cut out the new one so that I don't have all of this this mess of like other bits of paper added on um, something usually I'll do that if I really want to keep the pattern for a long time or if I um, uh, if I want to make it a pattern available, like to scan a pattern so that people can can buy it in the shop. Um, 
Tyler has a question. When you make the worn leather goods, do you make them for re reenactment, Renaissance fairs, or something else in particular? Um, I guess, I'm trying to tell if you mean worn leather, as in like leather that has like a sort of worn look to it, or worn leather as in something that you wear. <laughs> um, all of my goods are pretty much for, uh, yeah, they're, they're, I would say that I have sort of two categories now of uh, ex leather accessories, or I guess kind of three categories if you count my Viking reenactment stuff. Um, when I started out, I actually was doing Viking period reenactment. Um, and I got into leather working around the same time as I got into reenactment. And so I decided, oh, since I'm doing leather working and there's a bunch of leather stuff in Viking things, right? Like, great, I'll, I'll just use my leather working to fuel my passion for Viking reenactment. Um, and it turns out that there's actually not a lot of leather stuff in Viking period reenactment. <laughs> um, there's obviously, you know, there, there, there were leather goods that were worn. It's just that leather is a material that degrades a lot if, you, if it's not preserved in some way, either within like a tomb or in a bog or something like that. And so the Viking period, they didn't bury people in coffins. And so most of the biodegradable stuff did that. It degraded and went away. So we don't have a lot of evidence of Viking age leather stuff, basically. Um, we have the little bits of leather that we have were like stuff that was stuck onto a metal piece. And so I really wanted to do leather stuff and have leather things that looked cool, but it turns out that it wasn't a great thing to do for Viking reenactment. Um, so I still have a couple of Viking stuff uh, for reenactment, like my burka pouch um, and I still sell, sell shoe kits, but most of my stuff now, then I kind of switched to like, oh, so I'll do stuff for LARPing. Uh, LARPing is live action role play. Uh, it's sort of like Renaissance fair. Um, and yeah, I, I'd say that my stuff now is kind of for LARPing and, and Renaissance fair people. And I also have some things now that are a bit more everyday um, stuff that looks like it's made out of leaves and stuff like that, that I imagine people might wear uh, if they're sort of fashionable um, and a little bit sort of fantasy inspired, but yeah, that can be kind of for everyday wear. Um, but yeah, most of like, like this piece that I'm making right now, definitely for LARPing. It's for <laughs> a person who is a LARPer and yeah, it's for like a, a cape for their for her, for her outfit. All right, so now I have half of my, half of my sort of uh, the, the main body of the pattern made. Um, I, I think I'm just gonna, with this one, whoa. I'm gonna just tape on a new piece. To match this one so, so I'll put this oh gosh it's so hard to see the reflection <laughs> um, but yeah basically I'm gonna trace this the half that I've already done that I know is the shape that I want into paper um, and then, hmm, let's see. All right. Thank you, person who's mowing their lawn, for being really loud. <laughs> um, All right, so now this is going to tape on about here. 
Thanks, Sadie. I have a question for you guys. I would love to hear about what got you into leather waking um, and what kinds of projects you guys like to do when you do leather waking. So let me know in the chat. <laughs> that these are more or less whoa what's that about? okay these are let's make clear a little bit and even I'm having this this issue that I was talking about where the paper if it's not um, if it's not completely flat when you're cutting it or that you can get so that one of them is kind of slightly larger than the other and that's really annoying always double check that your sides are actually even <laughs> all right cool um yeah so garou is asking if i prefer to use oil or alcohol dye and why and the funny thing is i actually don't use either of those i use water-based dye um i i would love to do a video talking about this but i might as well just answer you right now um so the thing with dyes is that there's kind of two components of the dye. There's the um, the carrier or like sort of the medium that it's in and then there's the pigment itself. And both of those things can have, can be either oil or water based. And an alcohol dye is basically a water based pigment in alcohol or you know, a percentage of it is an alcohol. It's not like 100% alcohol. Um, so, the point of putting alcohol, putting the water pigment in alcohol, is that it dries a lot faster. Um, you'll notice, I mean, for a water-based dye to dry, it probably takes, I mean, it can take up to a day. It kind of depends on, like, how dry you want to get it. Um, and for an alcohol-based dye, it, like, I mean, it can take a matter of minutes. Like, it's whoosh, like the alcohol causes the water to evaporate or the, the medium of the alcohol evaporates really fast and so it dries really quickly. Um, so that's great if you, if you want, you know, if you want to go fast um, and you don't really mind uh, if you're working on smaller projects or because bigger things, if it dries too fast as you're spreading the dye around, then it'll be kind of uneven. I find. So with the water-based dye, it gives you a little bit more flexibility because it soaks in uh, slower. Um, you can cover larger areas a little bit more evenly um, and you don't have as much streaking and stuff like that. An oil-based dye, oil-based dyes are wonderful for your leather especially because your leather is it, like your skin. It wants 
it wants oil and conditioning and it loves oil-based dyes. It's like, oh yes, and it drinks them up and it's like, yay, I'm so happy. Um, but it means that your color, because the oil dye soaks into the leather so much more, the dye ends up looking, the color of the dye is much, uh, it's much lighter in color. Um, so you have to put a lot of layers on to get the same brightness of color as you do with a water-based dye or an alcohol dye. Um, so for that reason, I use water dyes uh, because it's a little bit, you know, my colors are brighter right away. I don't have to use as much dye to get the same color. Um, it does mean that, you know, if my, uh, if my stuff is scratched really deeply or cut or something like that, that you will see the like, the leather underneath is not dyed. Um, as opposed to with an oil-based dye, if you put, are putting all those layers of it on, then if it's scratched or something like that, it's not gonna, um, you're not gonna see like white leather underneath it or not white leather, but you know, uh, undyed leather underneath. Um, so, that's my opinion. What I do to compensate for the fact that my dye is water dye is that I always kind of, as soon as possible, I put on leather conditioner onto the leather. And I find that this really helps um, as it's drying to have it, uh, it, it doesn't dry out as much. And so it doesn't lose color because of drying out. Um, and it, you know, cause it's, it's, reconditioning the leather it's just it's good for the leather to have leather conditioner on it so that's what i do talk about their natural dye the natural dyes talk, talk about your natural dye oh <laughs> um uh, my husband was just saying that i should talk about uh some natural dyes that i was experimenting with recently um that i was making myself at home uh i I wouldn't use them for projects for clients, at least not yet, but it's actually pretty easy to make your own dye because um, anything that's like water, that's like a pigment that will hold in water can be used to dye leather essentially. Um, of course, certain um, certain pigments work better, better in leather than, than others. And so I did a bunch of, these are my tests in natural dyes. Um, I used cabbage is an amazing pigment um, for pretty much anything. So the all the purples on here are cabbage. Uh, the kind of teal green is cabbage that has um, uh, that has baking soda in it, which changes the color. Uh, the, I also have um, the browns come from just like pine needles that I boiled. But yeah, so it's actually possible to make your own dye. Um, for your projects. It's just that natural dyes are a lot more uh, inconsistent. So you're gonna get different colors with different batches. You need a lot of the thing that you're using to boil down to make the pigment. Um, so yeah, natural dyes. Woohoo. Um, Tyler says he got into leather working through bushcraft and his historically informed homesteading. Um, yeah, um, I definitely, I know that there's a lot of people out there who are doing like bushcraft and like trying to integrate, uh, traditional crafting into their everyday lives. And that's something that I love and that I try to do as well. Um, I kind of ended up doing this, my leather working stuff for LARPing and stuff like that more because I started out in Viking and I sort of enjoy, um, uh, I don't know, not exactly make-believe, but like, I don't know, I sort of, I, I like the, the sort of fantasy elements of it, but it's definitely something that I like to integrate into my everyday life as well. Um, and our plan is to have uh, a small farm one day. So definitely going to be using my leather working for that more and more as we kind of develop that project. All right, so here we have our um, our two sides of the of the piece now. Um, that you know. Whoa! That should now kind of sit. All right, so hmm.
Um, I think I need to have a look at what my original design for this project was so that I can figure out um, what exactly, what kind of shape I wanted to have in the front. I think that I kind of wanted this to be more like this shape. But now that I have this kind of larger shape here, I can kind of, I can change the forms on here by just like drawing on them. You know, sometimes I'll even, I'll like literally like draw while it's on me. So let's say, hey, why is that working? Maybe this pen is not meant for that. <laughs> um. So, whoa. I kind of wanted this like fun shape like this, but maybe, hmm. Steve, we haven't, let's see, uh, you said that, oh, that you got a piece of leather and huge scissors for Christmas. <laughs> um, my first project that I got into, whoa, for leather working was actually because my mom got me the like basic leather, um, leather tooling kit from the Tandy, which included um, like a, a bevel, a beveler tool, uh, and I, I don't know if you can still get these. I think that you can, but it, it came with a swivel knife, like a bevel tool, a couple of, uh, I don't know, like funny stamp things. And yeah, and that's, that's how I got into leather, leather working was gift from my mom. So it's a good way to start. <laughs> um, getting out my sketchbook. Time's it. All right. Do, do, do. Really annoys me that you can't like see very well. Where if I do that? Help. Kind of. <laughs> um, so this is a just a sketchbook that I use for ideas for projects, and I have in here. I think I have some fun stuff like uh, this. Um, there's the, the original sketch for the the maple leaf belt that I made. Oh, look, and there it is. That's that's the idea that I'm working on right now. Um, okay, so let's see. So yeah, like I said, I kind of wanted this this like curve curvy shape here. Um, the collar we're gonna add on in a minute. All right, so. And how do I want that to go in the 3D sense? I think maybe. Hmm. I had another sketch where I did. Um, I also want to have these straps coming across the top of it. Oh wait, no, I'm going backwards. Yeah. Mm. This was the original sketches for the gorget pattern. <laughs> I had a couple different ideas of like shapes and stuff. This is like a sketch for a dog, a dog harness. <laughs> Very important. Uh, okay, here. Right. Um, so originally, I, I had this funny sketch of a character um, that I sort of came up with this idea of the cross strap here. Um, but the this is actually going to be for a person who has like a kind of a knight outfit. Um, so it won't be quite as whimsical. Um, but I really wanted to have these straps coming across the chest because I feel like capes are always so heavy and they just like choke you. Um, 
so my plan is to have the the front part of the cape come down here and then have like straps growing across that then go around the back to hold the cape up and in place without it like choking you um but yeah, so, okay. I think that those can pretty much just attach at the ends here. Like this is like flat like this. All right, um, it is getting close to 2 p.m. Uh, and we have other stuff to do. So in about 15 minutes, I'm gonna end the stream and I'll try to pick back up um, maybe tomorrow maybe not i'm not sure but um yeah uh i'll try to pick back up on this project um at some later point during this during this week if we can't get through all of it right now and thank you so much to all um 11 of you <laughs> who showed up for the stream um this was a really fun first experience for me and i hope that I will get way better at this because this was really rough and I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, gosh, this, this, I tried to cover up my window here so that it wouldn't be ugh, so bright, but it's just making it worse. Is that better? Is this better? No one knows. <sighs> All right. Um, okay, I'm gonna finish cutting this out. I'm gonna quickly try to go over the collar and how I do that. Um, and then we're gonna be done for today. <laughs> uh, hmm. I'll leave it like that. All right. So as you can see, the side of the pattern, it looks pretty silly when it's flat, but then when I put it on my shoulders, we get this kind of nice curvy edge here. So for the collar, um, the most important thing uh, is that when you're measuring, that you have one of these like soft measuring tapes or fabric measuring tapes. Um, and it's fortunately, it's not, leather is, is stretchy and squishy and stuff like that. So if this isn't 100% accurate, like, it's going to be okay. <laughs> um, and you can always cut off a little bit at the end. So I'm just going to try to measure around the collar here. All right, so we've got about 16 inches. And the collar is basically going to... I. I mean, at least the way that I did it with the gorget, and I'm gonna try to do it this way too, is I'm gonna have a flat, a flat strip, but then I'm gonna have sort of um, segments that are that are going to go underneath here and will be attached. Um, so let's get out piece of paper that has to be at least 16 inches long. Great, perfect. Hey. All right. Um, and the basic shape for the collars that I've been doing, it's just kind of like rounded at the ends. Um, we'll see once it's on the thing how rounded it needs to be, but we'll do that once it's kind of in place. Okay, so there. And I probably want this to be, the collar itself to be maybe an inch and a half high, and the pieces that will go under the collar should be at least um, should be at least an inch. And so this is the part where I have to account a little bit extra for the thickness of the leather. And I usually use pretty thick leather. So I usually use like, I'd say a quarter of an inch. I, I add an extra quarter of an inch to 
um, measurements where I know that the leather is going to be bending. Um, so in terms of this, then I'm going to have like an inch, um, an inch for my pieces going underneath. I'm going to have a quarter of an inch to account for the curve. And then I'm going to have, uh, I mean, we can say an inch and three quarters for the collar, just so that I have a little bit to work with. So to give you an idea, so so I have the part that's gonna go underneath the leather, then I have a little section that's like for, to account for the bend, and then I have the section that's the actual collar itself. And I get a straight ruler. So all in all, that's about three inches. My mat, as you notice, has inches and stuff on it. So it makes it a lot easier when I'm doing these. Mm -hmm. That's about three inches there. <laughs> Any questions or comments? Wet molding for hides all day reasons. <laughs> Tyler, I finally just understood your comment um, of wet molding hides all tailoring sins, and it is so true. <laughs> um, it's it's really amazing what you can get away with with leather because um, not only does it not like with with fabric. If you if the stitches are like too close together between two like if they're different sizes on two different things the fabric will like scrunch up and do weird things the leather it can kind of take a little bit of scrunching and you can't even tell so it's like it's it definitely hides all tailoring sins it's great <laughs> um, actually one of the reasons why because I did a lot of costuming and you know regular sewing and stuff back in the day. Um, and I love leather so much because it's so forgiving. It's it's once you can get over the fact that it's like more expensive, and so as you're cutting it, you're like, oh no, I, I, if I make a mistake, it's gonna be like a hundred dollars or whatever. Once you get over that, like leather is so, like it's so easy to kind of cover up your mistakes. <laughs> um. All right, um, let's just make the mark on this way. Ah. All right, I got scissors. So, since, um, as I was, you know, as we were just talking about, since the leather is going to mold and stuff, I can really get away with doing a collar that's literally straight like this. Um, and if it normally for like a fabric collar, you would want to have it be kind of like on a curve a little bit so that when it flips up, it's not like digging into your neck. Since this is leather and I can kind of, I can stretch and mold it a bunch, uh, I can really get away with just having a straight collar piece. Um, I suppose that if, it were, if I was more of a tailor and, uh, and was not as much of into like wet shaping and stuff, then I could make sure that my leather pieces were a little bit more um, shaped like like clothes, but <laughs> since I'm not, <laughs> I can get away with this. Um, I'm So I'm gonna fold my collar piece in half and I'm gonna draw the little triangles that I'm gonna cut out um, so that, you know, it's the same on both sides. Um, do -do. This is an inch. Um, if, if you want, let's see, it's going to be in the back of the neck. So if 
I'm gonna have the triangle in the middle of the collar. I'm gonna do half a triangle like this so that, that this triangle when I unfold it will be kind of in the center of the back. I think that that'll make it easier when I'm doing the riveting holes. Um, and since we're not gonna see these triangles, it's it's kind of up to you whether you want them to be super accurate or not. Um, I, you know, I'm not really one for crazy accuracy. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of freehand draw these, uh, you know, maybe like about an inch wide each. Um, I could be using my mat more to like try to space these evenly. Um, and it's funny, you know, when I did the gorget video, I realized um, that originally I did the triangles along it with like a flat bottom on like, like this down here had like a, was like that, like was like flat. And I did that just because I saw a photo of someone else who had done it that way. And I didn't really think about it. And so I was doing it. And then I realized halfway through, I was like, why am I doing that? Like it's, it was so much extra work to cut off the bottom corner of this. And since it's, you're not seeing it anyway, and it's not like you're, you're skiving that leather so that it's almost comes like completely flat. So it's not like you feel it against your skin or anything. I don't know, it's completely unnecessary. Do not do that. <laughs> Just have a nice little pointy triangle. Um, for your on the under part of your collar if you're if you're doing something like this. All right. So eh. All right. Doo -doo -doo. So I'm obviously cutting this out with the piece folded in half so that it's the same on both sides. Um, and I'm cutting just to the point um, I made like a line that's, you know, that's down a little bit from where I want the sort of actual bottom of the collar to be. Um, and I'm doing my, these little pieces down there. All right. Are we doing on time? All right, looks like we have another three minutes. <laughs> Exciting, all right, this is your last chance to ask any burning questions that you have for me until I do another live stream and then you can ask them then. <laughs> all all right, come on guys, any last burning questions? <laughs> My favorite color. Um, I love orange. I am crazy for orange. Um, and I love orange and blue together a lot. So it's funny, I actually like, um, when I wanna be, and I'm not wearing, usually I have an orange scarf. When I wanna be like focused and like, okay, I'm doing work, I put on a, like a blue shirt and some kind of orange scarf if I can. Um, and my favorite color, color in leather, uh, I mean, I, I, most of my leather stuff, I end up having be this kind of mix of sort of orangey brown and dark brown. I would say that that's probably, it's like my signature look. So I guess that that would be my favorite color. This is actually a combo of um, saddle tan, saddle tan and just like medium brown dye. Um, 
Okay, so this collar piece, just to quickly show you what this is gonna look like. Um, if we bend all of these guys on the paper, it's gonna look like I have this gigundo collar, but we have to remember that when we go to the leather, we're gonna have to account for the thickness when we're bending it. But just to quickly show you guys how this is gonna work. I'm gonna bend all these up. Da -da 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 -da. So these are all now kind of bent at a 90 degree angle. And then, whoa. They're gonna slide under there. I like this. If I wanted, if you really need to like check um, whoa, how they um, work together, uh, you can tape, like you can tape them together underneath. Um, I did that with the gorget pattern actually. Um, but yeah, this is just sort of a general idea of how these two pieces will be fitting together. All right, so next time, um, I will maybe be going over how I'm going to translate this pattern onto the leather, um, how I'm going to punch holes and how I'm going to sew it together or, or uh, rivet it together in this case um, and stuff like that. So thank you so much everybody for joining this live stream. Hooray! <laughs> um, and hopefully um, I will see you again next time. Um, if you have any comments about the stream or if you're like, uh, oh gosh, I wish this was at a different time or I wish that you would have announced this um, in whatever way uh, you think is best, uh, please uh, leave a message or a comment or something on the community part of my page or uh, leave a comment on here on the stream. I would love to have feedback because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, everybody, and have a great day. Let's see if I can actually turn the stream off. Can I turn it off? We don't know. Let's find out. <laughs>